let's get this out of the way now. This is an 80s period piece about weddings, so you are going to see a lot of very bad wedding gowns and even worse bridesmaids dresses. So, here's a preemptive 20 cents. This family gave all three children red fruit punch to drink. Jesus, think of the ride home. Sandler is singing now, and I can't play it for you, but let's just all be honest and admit this movie was made because Sandler loves to sing. I mean, I really, really wish I could play it for you, because while Adam has fine pitch and is a funny songwriter, his singing voice is like the Pringles of singing voices. Yeah, I can get a sense of the real thing if I close my eyes and don't think too hard about it, but this still ain't no goddamn potato chip. Why can't you be more like your brother? Uh, Harold would never beat up his landlord. The Buscemiing goes on for another 30 seconds, and that is a total of 35 seconds longer than the groom, father, or anyone in the wedding party should have allowed it to continue on for. They'll be divorced in a year. This is why you don't have an open bar at your wedding. So cheers. Does the singer at the wedding reception get to make a toast? Because I don't think they do. And if they do, I don't think they should. It's a good wedding singer. Roll credits. Haha, <laughs> that was quick. What should I do with the rest of my day? Suppose I could finish that 80s themed crossword puzzle. Hmm, what do we have here? This song by Kylie Minogue was released in 1987. Oh, I know this! I should be so lucky! She's half as easy as Holly. I'll close this deal by the end of the week. <gasps> Female lead is supposed to be endearing because she's clumsy cliche. <laughs> Casual sexual assault. He's so nice to you. I let him look at my boobs at the Christmas party last year. Christ almighty, everyone is terrible here! Coca-Cola. You sure there's no rum in that Coca-Cola? What's most important though is if you've said Coca-Cola enough to trigger the bonus product placement points. Right now I feel like I'm doomed to wander the planet alone forever. One day one of these damn movies will be about self-discovery and truly knowing yourself before finding someone to couple with for the sake of not being alone. But until then let's roll on with the creepy best friend, the waitress who feels defined by the man she's dating, and laughing at anyone that doesn't conform to what we've been told is normal. There's the message to hold on to. Discount that couple from the first 10 minutes of up. Will this be your first time with intercourse? I'm not sure what you call this specific kind of humor where old people say or do young people sh but the 90s are full of it, and Sandler's own films are utterly fueled by it. I already had intercourse with eight men. That was a lot back then. That would be like 200 today. That's not how inflation works. I don't think. As she dips meatballs into his hands, I'm wondering, what is happening here? She's sane. He's sane-ish. She doesn't have Tupperware and suddenly she's doing middle school sh**. That's a good meatball. Every single last meatball squelching second of whatever the f*** this is. In case you confuse them with that other couple whose wedding you've been invited to today at the same venue. You're a lot prettier than that girl and she's getting married. What does pretty have to do with getting married? Julia would be excellent at cinema sense, but sadly, just this once. Gotta get married before your hips start spreading and you get facial hair. Monica's mom from Friends shows up here to play the exact same character. Why would you put fake brick walls behind six of the arches in your outdoor wedding stage set? Also, why would you have a cloaked gazebo near the stage with mysteries unknown inside? Also, also, what's with the inside blue ribbons on the aisles? Did you seat everyone from the outside in? Isn't it a fire hazard to block one side of an aisle's exit? Oh, God. Look, George's makeup is running! Did you know that men don't usually wear makeup? Did you? Sorry about that, the movie's lack of subtext must be rubbing off on me. Idolizing your own foreshadowing. Check out the cake. Check out the cake? What about the Kleenex box, the three stolen Pizza Hut drinking glasses, the three consecutive classic Coke cans, and some kind of terrible snack in a box called something real, and the giant container of sugar or flour that is dangerously close to the sink? She's evil for leaving him at the altar, but I give her points for walking here on her own to face it. Still sinning her, though. Yeah! Oh, Glenn! Be so jumpy. F you, dude, and your don't be so jumpy bullshit jumped up from behind her while she had her headphones in. Count yourself lucky this isn't post Charlie's Angels Drew. It would have righteously sucker punched you into a career of single episode crime procedural appearances for this unnecessary jump scare. Roses. Who decided roses were the most romantic flower? They have thorns! Was it Juliet? Love should never come with thorns. Glenn, I love you so much. But Las Vegas, I thought hey, Jules, you- Jules, it's the romance capital of the world. Misunderstanding Las Vegas this badly. Vegas is the drunk, accidental second marriage capital of the world. Gambling capital of the world. The highest water bill per green lawn differential in the world. But romance! <laughs> Giant mood ring pendants. Does the movie ever explain why Billy Weddington's house has a Lowe's greenhouse level of flowers and plants outside? No? What the f*** is with all the plants and flowers then? Hey, you better do something, because I don't want to be known as the brother-in-law of the town nut job. And a pop at mental health. This film is determined to get the stereotypically offensive bingo card ticked off before the third act conflict cliche is even a dot on the horizon. After Happy Kilmore, this is a second Sandler movie to defy the logic of dartboards. This thing is basically between two sets of glass windows, for Christ's sake. You either hit the board, the skinny-ass supposed chimney, or glass! Someone teach Adam Sandler how to dart. 
Then you have this guitar, the globe, the beer bottles, the drum stored unusually high, the hanging glass. Is that a pompazon? Look at this table. It has Chinese and pizza leftovers open to the air, as well as open peanut butter and a warm light above it all. The film wants this scene to represent laziness, but I honestly think it represents disease and death. Also, it is legal to take home and display a legitimate stop sign. Don't ask how I know this, because I am bound by a settlement contract to act like I have no knowledge about this. I had nothing to offer anybody. I haven't done jack shit since high school. Cinema sense. Don't ever hire a broken-hearted wedding singer, of course. But also, why did he have gigs scheduled so soon after his marriage? Either he didn't plan a honeymoon, or he has taken more than the requisite two weeks to mourn his ex-fiancée. What exactly is the motif here? Black statues, red and silver color scheme. Red and silver? What are you, an infant? He just had his heart broken. Why would he even think about coming back to work? Yeah, welcome to the party, pal. You are the worst wedding singer in the world, buddy. People in this movie keep trying to do my job for me. Sir, one more outburst, I will strangle you with my microphone wire, you understand me? Or, since he's paying for this, he could have the mic unplugged and have Robbie's ass kicked off the stage and out of the wedding for not doing his job. But nope, he's gonna sit down and let this stranger's love is dead tirade continue to ruin his daughter's wedding for absolutely no fathomable reason at all. So you will listen to every damn word I have to say! I don't know, these movies always feel like they're going overboard, and regardless of quality, Sandler seems to be bulletproof. Yes, he may well be doing the dirty work of getting a blended mix of comedy and sincerity, and maybe I should just go with it, but when it comes to actors, he doesn't even crack my top five. I don't know, sometimes these things just don't click. Now let's cut this stupid cake, because I know the fat guy's gonna have a heart attack if we don't eat again soon. Don't agree with that. That's not how heart attacks work. None of this is okay. He goes from achingly sobbing his way through Celebrate, only to go full troll two minutes later with a feral performance of Love Stinks. The sin is for him even pretending to do his job properly in the first place with the sobby Celebrate. <laughs> it took long enough. Glenn and I set the date. So you have to play our wedding. Hmm, I wonder what I could say to the guy who's just shared his hatred of all things wedding related after being left at the altar to make him feel better about his life. I know! Let's tell him about how happy I am to finally be getting married and invite him to witness said happiness! That'll work! Okay, she said pretty much everyone had left the wedding reception, so these cars are likely the staff. But they all look pretty nice for 1980s catering staff. And where the f*** is he going anyway? Did he walk here? Did he come alone? Did none of his bandmates look out for him? But also, and perhaps more importantly, what the f*** is up with these parking jobs? This is a shit show. That cloth-covered jeepish Suzuki samurai thing is 100% blocked in. Is it true that you're gonna end up in a mental institution? Cuckoo's nest! Cuckoo's nest! Kids. Hang on, earlier Julia said that she'd been wearing the ring for two years. Forgive me for my naivete, but don't you have your engagement party at the point of getting engaged? Why'd they wait until they set up the date of the wedding to celebrate getting engaged? I love how many 80s movies try to mock the fashion of the era with all these white suits paired with colored t-shirts. As though that shit wasn't prominent well into the early to mid-90s. The influence was Miami Vice, which ended in 89, but the fashion impact went way beyond the 80s decade. August 5th is less than three months away. We've got a lot of planning to do. Less than three months? I hate to break it to you, but if you haven't started planning, you are f***ed. Unless you live in a super small town, or in a town inside a movie where magical shit is possible. I heard what happened to you at your wedding. That was so cold. You must have felt like shit. People like this. Let's keep the fun rolling. Take it away, George. Robbie knows that Do You Really Wanna Hurt Me is still the only song in George's repertoire, and yet he still insists on leaving him to perform it in the most inappropriate of times to the least receptive of audiences. Between this and the all-out brawl he caused at the wedding earlier, how is Robbie still getting booked? Here's another early Sandler staple. Sandler's character befriends or defends a kid that's being mocked or ostracized by their peers. Who of you out there would like to dance with this fine-looking woman? I'd like to do more than dance with her. <laughs> that is f***ed up! And he's singing again! Kid grabs her ass, Sandler laughs, she shrugs, and I guess that behavior is fine, everyone. George can play multiple instruments, but has only taken the time to learn how to sing one damn song by the Culture Club. Adult Adam Sandler is taking a teenager's hands and putting them on his own goddamn ass, and viewers laughed at this at the time. Now the old people are grabbing ass and it's hilarious, but a grown man still took a teen girl's hands and placed them on his own ass, and I'm not okay with that. Holy lavishly latex life event, Batman. That is a lot of balloons. I mean, there's only four Jewish families in this town. Counting the Jewish families in your town. Did you give him that price or not? During the pitch for this movie, Adam Sandler told the executives, this guy knows the town so well he would be able to leverage better flower prices for Drew Barrymore than the average customer gets because he knows of a discount a friend of his got. And they bought it! I've never seen it from this perspective before. Is this what I look like? Never? Not once? So he's never been to a wedding in his life that had a wedding singer. He's never even watched George, for that matter? How did he even know what a wedding singer was to make that his job if this is the first time watching one perform? I wrote half of it when I was with Linda, and I wrote the other half after we broke up, so it's a little uneven, you know? 
I don't mind. I'd like to hear it. This movie goes out of its way to not only give Adam Sandler chances to sing, but to have other characters basically beg him to. Okay, I just want to warn you that uh, when I wrote this song, I was listening to The Cure a lot, so... Skip! I always just envisioned the right one being someone I could see myself growing old with. And Glenn will be a really good-looking older man. Yikes! Pretty deep, wholesome statement about love immediately undercut with a statement about surface beauty and good looks. Maybe this character isn't ready for any kind of relationship right now. Though the movie don't care and will still race towards its predetermined destiny. Cake tasting! Dress fitting! Limo slaloming! Excitement? No more cake bites on the plate and then suddenly in the next shot, there's one left. I know Sandler is just f***ing with his friend, but why would an are you good enough wedding limo driver test be based on the speed with which he arrives, loads the happy couple, and leaves? This is like hiring your florist after a math test. Ah, the 80s, when everyone had a couple dozen lemons lying around on their table. I can only assume that the over-lemoning on this table is a deliberate attempt to distract the eye from the coral confusion that is the decor in this house. Not porno tongue. Church tongue. When thou art kissing in a church or other religious structure, thou shalt not use the same level of tongue as those who let spectators pay to watch them fornicate. Leviticus 28.19. I'm gonna have to see it if I'm gonna make an educated decision. My god, this kiss setup would feel contrived if it was in a porno, let alone if it was supposed to be an actual rom-com. I'll be upstairs hooking it up. He is back down here with a screwdriver and the instructions 30 seconds later. No one will be seated during the scene where the old lady who raps can't stop talking about Robbie's penis and its size. Eavesdropping. I've said before and I'll say it again, 1998 isn't nearly far enough removed from the 80s to be throwing any sort of fashion-based shade like we're seeing here. This kind of feels like McDonald's going after Wendy's for serving fish. If you're on a first date or a double date and you go to a loud-ass f***ing nightclub, you are impressively stupid. Hey, remember ashtrays? Sunday's a big day, huh? Getting married on Sunday. That's grade A top choice meat. Grade A top choice is not a meat classification in the United States. Choice is one of the great options, but not top choice or bottom choice. And yes, there are sometimes grades of beef that are triple A, double A, or single A. And the single A is the least marbled of them all. That means the least amount of flavor. So he just called that waitress's ass some pretty average meat. Speak for yourself. I'm not too old. I can still get chicks like that. Ten years ago. Try ten days ago. Glenn has just admitted to cheating on Julia and that he has every intention of cheating on her again in the future to the man that is currently dating her cousin and has been helping her plan said wedding for the last three months. Why do you think this was a smart idea? Why does he think his secret is safe with Robbie? I have never been to a club where one person did a show-off dance and everyone else gathered around to watch and clap. That just does not happen anywhere but movies. Does my hair smell bad? Oh, it smells good, actually. Well, it looks like Glenn was right on the money in sharing his infidelity with Robbie because he doesn't even attempt to tell Julia a damn thing. She might be drunk, but there's nothing like the news that your soon-to-be husband has spent the 80s f***ing more women than James Bond to sober up a person pretty sharpish. Molly, what do you think of this Glenn guy? You think he's trustworthy? <laughs> yeah, you better be. Yeah. That's it! That's your attempt to tell somebody that Julia might be making a mistake in marrying a man that just admitted to cheating on her mere days ago? Damn it! We could have saved another 30 minutes of 80s nostalgia and the inevitable third act conflict if he just spoke now instead of forever holding his peace. How was your bottle of rum last night? Okay, this is the least hungover person I have ever seen. I need to consume a pound of bacon, two coffees, and a big old self-loathing sized glass of holy sh**. What did I do last night? Is there any evidence? Before I even look 10% as put together as Julia here. I thank you for your time. Actually, sir... I really need this job to impress a girl. Robbie thinks the earnestness of his boner will help him land a job in a bank. You don't even have to give me the job. If you could just give me some business cards with my name on it, I think that might help. Does Robbie not know he can print his own business cards? I just thought that teaching was such a big part of your life. Well, it was, but now I'm doing some stuff to better my situation. That sounds kind of selfish. F*** you, Julia! He lives with his sister and is a wedding singer. Telling him he's selfish for looking out for his own financial self-interest is evil! But you're above all that material bullshit. You are marrying Glenn! You don't get to have a say here! You're marrying Glenn because he's got money. You asshole. Look, I know these movies need the third act conflict to set up the final happily ever after, but this one is so contrived. Robbie is triggered into getting a real job because of one line from Holly about security. Julia's reaction to this is to put Robbie down for wanting to better his own situation. Robbie's reaction to that is to attack Julia for marrying for money. They both have shallow motivations that lead to extreme misunderstandings, and this is the movie's version of a healthier relationship option? You're going to the mental institution. Beat it! Why is this scene? Why did they even film this little kid saying mean sh**? The moron she's gonna marry actually tells me he cheats on her. But can I tell her? No, I mean, who am I to break up her marriage? She isn't even married yet. And if she was, this is a great reason to break it up. 
you start a cheese making business with your buddy, but a few years down the line, they started using your shared cheese making factory to set up lots of other little businesses selling other varieties of cheese, you'd be rightfully pissed off and sue their ass. I may be misunderstanding how the cheese industry works and affairs in general, but I'm certain my logic is almost mostly sound. I'm just gonna be with a different chick every night. Isn't this a super small town where everyone knows everyone? A different chick every night in this town lasts, what, a month? If that? If you found someone you can love, you can't let it get away. You're right, man. Thank you, Sam. That worked. You're gonna marry Glenn on Sunday. You're gonna love him, and everything's gonna be wonderful. Sounds like Julia's mom graduated from the Disney school of running away from reality. Um, draping cloth over the lamps is a fire hazard, no matter how pretty it looks. He sees her enjoying pretending to get married, even though she's actually pretending to marry him right now. And uh, has there ever been a romantic comedy with a budget of 30 million or more that didn't rely on a huge misunderstanding to drive the conflict? Even one. <laughs> Movie has time for this. Not only does this meeting rely on Robbie being at this bar and Glenn's route taking him past it, but there's also maybe a 20 second window where Robbie walks out at the perfect time without missing Glenn and the gang. When people say, you couldn't write this, it's because nobody would believe it. And yet here we are writing this. Don't go snitching to Julia about this. I know you got some little crush on her. You f***ing knew this and still told him about all the women you've been sleeping with? My God, Glenn is either the most overconfident or most over stupid villain to ever villain. Why don't you write a song about this? You can call it, uh... I got punched in the nose for sticking my face in other people's business. That is a terrible title for a song. She likes Robbie, so she goes to his house, only to find his ex answering the door, and that, like, somehow, upsets her. She's due to be married this Sunday! Even if they both secretly like each other, Robbie is not an asshole for sleeping with his ex before your wedding because you have not called off the wedding. God, movies invent so much f***ing bullshit for people to get upset at each other about, as though simply living life wasn't conflict-producing enough. Please get out of my Van Halen t-shirt before you jinx the band and they break up. Nice reference, bud. If this is set in August of 85, Van Halen was all but broken up already. David Lee Roth was trying to get a film off the ground in January, and Rolling Stone magazine ran an article as early as July 84 saying that the band was on hiatus. Now all this may have been rumor and unconfirmed when this is taking place, but the sin here is that in researching this, I now know more about the inner workings of Van Halen than I ever desired to. She went to your house to tell you she was falling for you, and Linda answered the door in her underwear. She was so upset, she and Glenn just jumped a plane to Vegas. Honestly, if people who are in love would just f***ing talk to one another and ask questions, then none of this sh would have to happen. Okay, I can't play the audio, but I'll go ahead and take the sin off for the rap and granny. You're never gonna find one. There's gotta be a million wedding chapels in Vegas. Never you fear, best friend character. He's going to accidentally himself onto the same exact flight she's on. Uh, your credit card. How does the sole limo driver in a small town have a valid credit card that can cover a first-class ticket to Vegas? But if you don't give it to me, I'm gonna tell everybody what you said at the bar. Did she just choose to ignore the blatant bribery? He wasn't doing this to be nice. Bizarrely, he's actually doing it to make sure the secret of how nice he truly is is kept secret. Some creeping coach who thinks he's Don Johnson just asked me to be part of the Mile High Club. He said I was grade A, top choice meat. I've ragged on the coincidences in this film a lot, but this one is truly on its own plane of existence. Not only does this rely on Robbie catching the same flight as Glenn and Julia without realizing it, but it also depends on Glenn using this specific phrase and the flight attendant's decision to unprofessionally broadcast her experience to the entirety of the first class cabin. This is one of the few films where I'm begging for all this to be a dream so it actually has a chance at making sense. They're on this plane. No way! The entire first class section of this plane would be excellent at cinema sins. Okay, but them shoving her fiance into a lavatory is bullying and wrong. <laughs> She's wearing the same damn wedding dress that she was going to wear to the original wedding? I mean, that's weird, right? Isn't it? Actually, I, I guess that's fine, right? Why does that seem weird? Is it weird? It's weird, right? Oh my god, what has this movie done to my brain? You need a prostitute. What if I told you Insane was working 50 hours a week in some office for 50 years, at the end of which they tell you to piss off, ending up in some retirement village? hoping to die before suffering the indignity of trying to make it to the toilet on time. And, uh, like the time I couldn't find my car. Dude, where's my car? That's a spicy meatball! I haven't done jack sh since high school. San Diego's high school football room! What's my name? Dunkachino! Dunkachino! Chuck Khan! I'm afraid you're just too darn loud. You've just inspired me to hire a DJ. So thank you. Well, smack my ass and call me Judy. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Do you have any experience? Oh, but 
I'm giving piano lessons again. Well, I thank you for your time. Well, at least we get the toaster. Will you leave now, please? I got a bird. His name is Ronnie. Well, tell Ronnie you got knocked the f out.